60-0326, The Unchanging God, Tulsa, Oklahoma, USA. Just a moment for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, it is a grand privilege that we have of coming into the presence in this attitude of worship and praise to Thee, and so that we can call Thee our Father. Being born of Thy Spirit, we are Thy children, and with the privilege of asking what we will, and faith will bring it to us. We thank Thee for this. Most holy and righteous God, we ask tonight that You would speak to those, Lord, who are needy, those that need salvation to their soul, and for those that are sick and in a desperate condition, to the shut-ins, those that are in the hospitals, and the hospitalized, and cannot get to the meeting. O oh, thou great I am, go to their bedsides tonight and touch their sick bodies, that they might be able to come from the hospitals to serve thee. Forgive us of our sins as we forgive those that sin against us, that we might have thy favor in our midst tonight and to Speak to us through thy word. Thy word is the truth. Make it known unto us, Lord. Make thy word to live among us. For we ask it in the name of thy child, the Lord Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Now, for just to continue the message, I was certainly packed away with standing there listening to Brother the process, bring that message from the Apostle Peter, being able to walk on water, something that he nev- never did before. And we can just do many things that we never did before if we just listen to his word and take his word for it. He never made a promise but what will stand behind. Now, what time does the service start Sunday? 2.30. Well, that means about 1.30. Those who want prayer cards should be here about 1.30. Those one prayer cards will be here at 1.30 p.m. So you won't disturb the meeting while they're getting out the prayer cards. And at 2.30 the services begin and then we'll be out in time for you to go home and have you up. It is, is it dinner or supper here? I'm a southerner and it's supper to me. If they call that dinner, then what happened to my supper? I miss out somewhere. So I you go home to your supper, that's what I would call it, and then go to the uh, your churches. And the strangers in the gates we want to visiting here, these fine churches will be having Sunday school, Sunday morning and night and church. Sunday night. You find a place of your choice and attend that service. And now I kinda happy about this meeting for many reasons because I have looked forward to it for some time of getting back. I wish to just quote a verse out of the book of Job tonight, the 23rd chapter and the third verse. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. That's Job 23.3. I'm going to speak for a few minutes upon the subject of the unchangeable God. If I should call it a subject, these, uh, there are many things and practically all things change. Time changes. People changes, weather changes, nations changes, but God is unchangeable. He does not change. He is the same all times. God is an indefinite God, infinite God. I do not believe that there would be any word could ever explain the word or any way to explain the word infinite because it's the infinite. He's never had a beginning or he will never have an end. Therefore, when God is called on the scene to act or to make a decision the way that he acts or the decision that he makes that is forever the same he cannot change it because he's infinite he's perfect now you and i can say a certain thing and next day i will have to change it maybe and do something different or because we are finite we do not know all things but he is perfect and the first decision will have to be, the second decision will have to be like the first. Or if he makes another decision, then he did not act right when he made the first decision. Then that puts him finite, like 
I am or you are. What I'm trying to do before this healing service comes is instill in you a faith in God because that's what it takes for healing or salvation. You must have faith in God and God is no greater than his word or no more perfect than his word because God and his word is a self same thing. You have no you are no better than your word. God is no better than his word. And your word is what you are. God's word is what he is. Now any persons know that if God was called on the same one to save a man that was lost, and God saved that man by his faith, the next man calls on God, God will have to save that man if he becomes on the same grounds that the first man came on. Then if there is a sick man and he pleads to God for mercy and God gives him mercy and healing on the basis of his faith, the next man that comes on the same grounds and asks the same question, God's got to act the same way or he acted wrong when he acted the first time. So you see, we must make God real and changeable. Every soul that comes to God seeking salvation or healing, he's got to come on those basis. He's got to come believing that God is and the reward of those that diligently seek after him. Did not our Lord say, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them? Did not he say, ask the Father what you will in my name and you will receive it? Now that is infallibly the truth. And there is nobody that ever asked God anything but what God gave it to them if they come with an honest heart. Now the thing of it is, God gives it sometimes in the way that we are not expecting it. But God always keeps his word. There is no way for God to tell you anything and lie about it. And remain God. He cannot. He must keep his word forever. Is the truth. And when the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, that is the truth. And we not have faith enough to make all the things that he done live again. But I'd never stand in the robe of somebody who had faith enough to do it. I would be thanking God for that faith. But just the same, every promise that he made is absolutely truth. I can go on record for this tonight. If any people will take the right mental attitude towards any divine promise that God ever made and claim it for yours, he will. God will bring it to pass. If you take the right attitude towards it, knowing that if God said so, the promise is yours, and it's a personal property the very minute you receive it that way, then it has to come to pass. For Jesus said, the word is a seed, and a sower sowed, and a seed, if it's a Jamaica seed, and it goes into the ground, then... That seed under the right conditions of the sun and moisture will bring forth the life that's in the seed. And so is the word of God. If a man takes that word and place it in their heart and give it the right sunshine, the right temperature, not S-U-N, but S-O-N, and right temperature of faith in there, that seed and promise will live to you just like it did at the beginning, to the one it was given to, because it's God's word and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He cannot fail. Now, the thing is with the people is the way God appears. Many times you want to make an idol out of God. We ask to do something and then he must do it just the way that we ask it. Or we'll never say he never answered. When he, when we do that, we weaken our faith in God. And we weaken our testimony when we do not take him at his word. God always answers. No one Never ask, Jesus said, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, everyone that asks will receive, everyone that seeks shall find, everyone that knocks it will be open to them. Now, that's the only way that I've always found it, and I can get anything from God is to take him at his word, and believe it the way he sends it. Now, if we do not take it just the way that we think it is, we built God as an idol. He's got to answer. Just according to our ways, or oh well, it's just no good. He didn't answer us. God answers in many ways. He answers in peculiar ways, times, and everything is odd. We'll take, for instance, Moses. Moses was 80 years old. He was almost, uh, you might think, too old for God to deal with. He was an old man and expected in his age to be dealt with God. Another thing, he was under the Mount Horeb, uh, an unexpected place. God met him at an unexpected age, at an unexpected place, in an unexpected way. God didn't meet Moses the way he usually meet, met men. He met Moses in an unusual way, in the way that he chose to meet Moses in. That's the way he answers our prayer. 
in the way that he thinks is best and his way is always right if we ask for anything and it doesn't happen just the way god or the way we think that god ought to let it happen then that makes us lose and fall back let us god stand firm on the word and say it's true and it just receive it the way he sends it that's the way you got to believe god it may come disguised it may come in another way a roundabout way but no matter what way it comes if we have asked we shall receive god said so and that settles it forever if god says so now when you get to talking taking god like that and believing it now moses what did he say that i prayed for god to make me a military man and here he is in a burning bush don't make any difference how god appear to him just so he appeared that's all that matters here as long as god comes and answers as long as you we recognize it to be god jacob another character he was caught between two occasions he had done some mean things some sneaky little tricks to his father-in-law laban and he was running from his father-in-law going back home to mama and when he come to find out here come his brother that he had done some dirty little tricks too was meeting him with an army just remember your sins find you out and then jacob all disturbed and perplexed and in trouble sent his wives across the brook and went back on the other side in an unexpected place and at an unexpected time he met god in an unexpected way what a way to meet god in a wrestling match but it was god regardless of whether he is in a burning bush or in a wrestling match it was god and the main thing was that jacob he'd had dreams and visions and so forth but this was one time he could lay his hand up on something and say it's god and he was able to hold on to it until the blessing came oh if we could do that if we could find a spot to where we could see god whether it's in his word wherever it is and recognize it's god and hold on to it until the blessing comes wrestle it out with god god promised to do it god said if we'd seek we'd find ask and it shall be given knock it shall be open every word is true when jacob got a hold of something that he could look at hold to to with his hand and seeing that it was god he would not turn it loose oh if christian dom could do that if you can lay your hand a hold of something that's real catch a vision of god and see his presence and hold on to it until god sends the answer back and the blessing what a revival would break out here in Tulsa if people could do that could see the power of the living god something real no matter what form he comes in we have our ideas but god has a way of sending things to us answering our prayer there's been prayer meetings going on here in this city for a long time for a revival i believe if we would just open our eyes and be ready to receive it god will send it to us in his way of doing it in his time god will grant it but we've got to recognize we have asked and if we asked then we shall receive he held on to it an expected time an expected place and an unexpected way but when he realized that it was god he held on to it isaiah the young prophet he'd had a wonderful life he'd leaned upon the good king's arm and everything come fine and he'd uh, got all fat and over it for meeting and one day the king died and as he was caught in a vision when he seen the train of the lord he saw angels flying through the building with wings over their face and wings over their feet and flying with two wings crying holy 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 the lord god almighty and when he seen that and know that he was standing in the presence of the holy god he said woe is me for i am a man of unclean lips and i'm living among unclean people and the lord was crying who will go for us and the angel took the tongs and got some coals off the altar and touched it to his mouth and cleansed him it was an unusual sight for the prophet it was an unusual way that god dealt with him but god knows how to deal with man isaiah had been educated and at school with the king and so forth he had the best that he could give him mentally i suppose in his intellectuals but god had to make a prophet out of him by revealing himself to him by giving him something tangible that he could see it 
was no more so much in literature and reading and writing, but the things that he had read about God and heard about God become manifested right before him. Then he said, I am of unclean lips and dealing with unclean people. And God prepared him for his days of prophecy. That's the way God does things. He does it in a mysterious way. The prophet Elijah, we might think of him for a moment. There he is laying back in a cave. He'd seen the power of God a few days before that, 40 days before. He had God's power. He had prayed. And three years and six months, it had not rained. And then he prayed again on the mountain. And fire came down from heaven and devoured the sacrifice. And then he prayed again, and rain came and blessed the earth. And then, by the fear of the threat of the queen, he ran into the wilderness. He knew he was missing something. There was something in him that wasn't right yet. When he pulled back in the cave, there came an earthquake outside that shook the cave where he was sitting. He was a sitting. There came a mighty rushing wind. There came thunders and lightnings and blowing. And it was all God, but it didn't attract the prophet. He didn't touch him somehow. He knew what God's power was. He knew God had shook the mountains and he'd had rushing winds and so forth and sent fire out of the heaven. But he waited and way down inside of him come a little still voice that attracted the prophet. There was something he'd seen his power to do things, but this time he felt it, his presence and a still small voice speaking into his heart. Then the prophet raised up and went out to the end of the cave. Sometimes you ask for things, get something, and vice versa. We make God something that we want to make him answer the way we think he ought to answer. Israel, there another case, Israel was looking for a mighty king to come to beat the Romans down with a lot of iron. What did God give them? A baby. Instead of a mighty king, he gave them a baby wrapped in a swaddling cloth said, we'll find him laying in a manger. He didn't come the way that they expected him to come, and they refused it. It has to come our way or it's no good. They said, take it back, and he did. That's right, you've got to accept it the way God sends it, and be happy about it. God anchors a little something in your heart and says, this is it, believe it, hold on to it. That's God's word. He promised he'd confirm it to you, and if he confirms the word, hold on to it, yeah? They didn't want that baby. If you can't send us a king, why? You won't have that baby. You can just take it back. See? It's got to be a way that that we think it's got to be. We must remember that God does it his way. And his way is always the right way. So we've got to believe what God said about it and know that it's absolutely the truth and stay with it, hold on to it. Jesus, when he became a man, he was humble, and how could a king of the heavens have spit in his face and a rug around his head and hit him with a stick and said, Say, they tell me you're a prophet. Tell us who hit you and we'll believe you. And he never opened his mouth. How could that be? The king that they was looking for was going to beat the world down, but God sent them the king. And because God sent it in his way, they may refuse to believe it. But God had that way of doing his, to send it. And he never sent it any other way but what his word said he would come. But they had their mind made up it had to be some other way. That's where we make the mistake, friends. That's where the trouble is. When the forerunners joined the Baptist came the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Why? The Bible said all the high places will be brought down and all the low places will be lifted up and all these things will take place. The mountains will skip like little drums and the leaves will clap their hands. And they were was expecting a shaking of this man coming down out of the corridors of heaven, all dressed in fine linen and crowns upon his head or something. What happened? God sent them an old creature down on the wilderness with a piece of sheepskin wrapped around him looked like a fuzzy worm, his face all full of beard. Oh, Avery was such a fellow as that, eating locusts and wild honey. We don't want nothing to do with that. How could that foreign the Messiah? But it was 
God's way of following the Messiah. So we've got to receive it in the way God said it. God is pleased with it. That's his way. He's all wisdom. He's all powerful. He's omnipotent, omnipresent. Oh, he's God. The I am, not the I was or will be, but I am forever the same. He's God and he does things in mysterious ways. And But he does it for his own glory. He does it because that it's best to do it that way. We must receive it the way that he sends it. I'm sure that all of our tax and calendars and so forth that we have brought up, Jesus coming on a cloud, the next one has got him on a white horse and all like that. It will be altogether different when he comes. Uh, it won't be the way that we've got and many will fail to see it. Many will fail to see this day that we are living in. Many fail to see the sign of the coming Messiah right now. Many people fail to see it. They, uh, it's right before them, yet they don't see it. Jesus said when he spoke in St. Luke, I believe it was, and he said, as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man, as it was in the days of Noah. Did you notice how he said the morals of the people in the days of Noah, eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, but when he said Sodom, he just left it off. That was the fire that burned Sodom. It's the fire that catches the earth today. Let's review that for a few minutes. Abraham, setting out there, not expecting anything. He was in the poorest of the land. It was in the heat of the day. Uh, odd time for something to happen. But he's seen a man come walking through the, of them. Something in his heart told him it was God. And he held on to it. He wouldn't let them pass by. Oh God, may that happen here. Don't let it pass by. Hold on to it. Come in, sit down under the oak. I'll fetch a little water. It will be a servant to you. Let me wash your feet. I'll bring you a morsel of bread to satisfy your soul. Then you may go on. For this reason, my Lord has come to me. Yet, not too sure, but he knew that there was something sparked in his heart. It must be the time. When that man said and talked to him, look what he did. He looked down. He said, Abraham, a stranger, how did he know his name was Abraham? Where is the wife Sarah? He knew he had a wife, and now know her name was Sarah. The Bible said that Abraham told him in the tent behind you, and he said, See, that Abraham is the heir of the world. Will I keep anything from Abraham, seeing that he's the heir of the world? And he said, According to the time of life, I'm going to visit you. And Sarah, 90 years old, back in the tent behind him, Never seen him, never knew nothing about him. Neither did he know about Sarah. And she laughed within herself, perhaps like that, put her hands up to her mouth. And this angel with his back turned said, Why did Sarah laugh? Who was that? He little expected that man to be who he was. But when he went to leave Abraham, called him Elohim, God Almighty. What was it a sign of? that God Almighty, in the form of the Holy Ghost, in the last days before this world shall burn, he will come to his people and dwell among his people in flesh, making himself known to his church just before the fire fall, just before the destruction of the world. Elohim, God, the Holy Spirit, will come in among his people and do the signs that he did then. Oh, he's the unchangeable God. That's the way he made himself known to the Jews. That's how he made himself known to the Samaritan, the same way many of the church believed him. Oh, he's a Beelzebub, but those who seen it and recognized it to be God, they recognized who he was. The women at the well, she said, Sir, Messiah cometh, we know, and he will tell us these things. You must be his prophet. He said, I am he that speaks to you. She ran into the city and said, Come to a man, and expected she was to find a man like that and expected for she to find the Messiah on earth dwelling among his people. So is it today the people don't expect. They are expecting something else. They're expecting bombs and things to fall, which probably will be. They're expecting some great union among the church people. Now it may be, but in the midst of all that, God has sent the power of his son, Jesus Christ, among the people. And they're having a new Pentecost, the power of God being poured out 
and the same signs and wonders that he did many years ago is in the midst of the people as Jesus said it would be we don't look for an union among all the churches and things we look for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost and it will come and do things that we might not be expecting I know he's here now I know the Holy Spirit is here in the meetings and I know that he promised wherever two or three are gathered in my in there together I'll be in their midst Jesus promised that wherever two or three that's the power that's the what the early church relied upon the presence of Jesus wherever two or three are gathered in my name I'll be in the midst and whatever they agree upon a touching one thing and ask they shall receive it and that is true and that's God's promise he's unchangeable he's the same yesterday today and forever and he's here now do you believe it let us bow our heads just a moment for prayer just before we pray and you with your bowed heads with your heads bowed would there be any here would say brother Branham remember me let my spiritual eyes come open that I might see and know him how I want to see him how I love him raise up his hands and say remember me God bless you Lord bless that's good may God of heaven be merciful someone else going back to me right here remember me brother Branham in prayer God bless you the unsearchable riches of Christ the revealing of his power and his goodness may the God of heaven give mercy and kindness and grace to you all our Heavenly Father we bring this audience to you at this hour looking around and seeing the hands of the people going up the unchangeable God working in a mysterious ways his wonders to perform we pray O oh God that your Holy Ghost your spirit will dwell in every heart here tonight give to them the desire of their heart make them have faith Lord put something within them a courage that they'll know that you are ever present ever living to make intercessions you are sitting at the right hand of God Almighty and there at his throne the precious body of Jesus Christ sits there where the Holy Spirit is on earth and he's there as your high priest to make intercessions upon a confession what we confess that he will do that's what he's there to make right his own blood in the charger before him his own garments bloody sitting there seeing that God cannot look through that blood and see unrighteousness because Christ has took our sin and our sickness oh father God we pray that as he being a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of infirmities that he will be touched tonight by every infirmity that's in the building all infirmities that whether it be spiritual or physical that will have a healing and a revival will take place out of this city oh souls after souls into the kingdom of god grant it lord hear our prayer we love you father and we are waiting for great expectations for the holy spirit to come in our midst and do that which he promised he would do we ask it for their sake in the name of jesus christ amen you love him with all your heart are you expecting him to do the exceeding the abundance above all that you could do or to think he said he would do the exceeding abundance above all that we could do or think he promised to do it now when jesus was here on earth how many knows that he did not claim to be a healer how many knows that he wasn't a healer you mean you don't know the bible no better than that he said it's not me that doeth the works it's the father that dwelleth in me he doeth the works very well i send to you john 5 19 very well i send to you the son can do nothing in himself but what he sees the father doing that doeth the son likewise is that what he said saint john 5 19 when he knowed where a man was laying with the infirmity laying on a pallet told him faith would make him whole pick up his bed and go through the house and he was questioned amongst the jews and he left thousands of people laying there lame halt blind treated he said i only do what your father tells me or shows me to do now i do what i see the father doing the father worketh and i work it at you now that's his spirit now jesus himself did not perform any healings without first god showing him and that's the scripture i do nothing except the father shows me first 
Lot tells me, shows me first. Then when he shows him, he goes and does what the father tells him. The woman that touches the garment. Now, he never did that. He never said he did it. He said, thy faith has saved thee. Thy faith has saved thee. Blind but against the gate, thy faith has made thee whole. He had nothing to do with it. The people's faith did that. Because they believed that he was the son of God, she touched him. The woman did. And she touched his garment. And now he didn't feel it physically because the Palestinian garment has an underneath garment and the robe hangs loose. And she touched the border of it. For she said within her heart, If I but touch his garment, I'll be made whole. And she touched him. And when she did, why she felt within herself, because her faith had been, if she could touch it, she'd be made well. And she did what she thought that would bring the power of God to her. And she felt that it was all sufficient, and it was because she believed it. Jesus turned and looked around at the audience, said, Who touched me? Peter rebuked him, said, Who touched you? Well, all of them is touching you. Why would you say a thing like that? He said, But I perceive that I have gotten weak, or virtue is gone from me, which means strength. I got weak. Somebody touched me with a different kind of a touch. And he looked around over the audience until he found the woman. And he told her about her blood issue had stopped because her faith had made her well. Now, that's the Jesus was yesterday. That's the same Jesus today. That's the same Jesus that will be tomorrow. The days are tomorrow and will be forever. When people think that God makes a promise and don't keep it, Mohammedans or nothing else have held the Bible in one hand and the Quran in the other one and say one of them is right and the other is wrong. Both of them can't be right because they are contrary one to another. I say you prove that your prophet is dead. He is in the ground. Our Jesus raised from the dead and he promises things that he did will do also. I said, now let me see you do the works of Muhammad. Can't do it. But the works of Jesus Christ is done by the Holy Ghost. When he comes to anoint the people, do you believe that? Certainly we believe it. What would keep us from believing? Because God made a promise. God said so. And that settles it. Now, man cannot do that. It's supernatural. It's something that man can't do. While I've just got a couple minutes time, I want to explain that, see, man cannot do nothing. It's God in man. Jesus said, I'm, I'm the vine. We are the branch. Now, as long as the branch is in the vine, it will bear the fruit of the vine. Now, God always used men for his agent. That's why he used his own son to unveil himself. He came down and took the form of man in order to die the death for man. He could not die in the spirit, but he was put to death in the flesh. Then God was in Abraham. God was in Isaac, God was in Jacob, God was in Joseph, God was in David. He was in all those people back in there, them prophets, and so forth. It was God working through men. Now, in this New Testament age, the blood of Jesus cleanses his church and sanctifies it that his Holy Spirit might continue to carry the work of God on through the ages. He's just the same today. If he isn't, then we are false witnesses of this Bible. If it, if that isn't true, then the Bible isn't true. It's time that men preach the gospel. It's time that the power of God was made known. When heathens trying to step on that word, we need men as the Hebrew children. Our God is able to deliver us from this. That's right, it's time. God remains the same. Now God cannot heal you because he's already done it. When he was wounded for transgressions, bruised for iniquity, the excitement of our peace was upon him, and his stripes we, you were healed. It's a past tense. If he stood here tonight with this suit on that you gave me, he could not heal you. If you asked him, he'd say, I've already done it. You believe it? He must do something to make you know that it was him, and that's the way he does today. He makes it known to his people, by his people, that he is God, not the man, but God. Now, he is just as real tonight. I know he's here. How many ever seen that picture of the angel of the Lord? That light. There's many of you 
Twitter. They got it here, I think somewhere. Boys may have it. Jane and them got it the back there. That right, remember, if I never meet you again in Earth, I'll meet you at that day. That light isn't standing two feet from where I'm standing now. That's right, he promised it. And I believe God. I've seen it against tens of thousands of heathens. I've seen it in the times when witch doctors on both sides and see the power of God paralyze them and sit there. God either God or he's not God. Jesus is, is either the son of God or he was an imposter. He is Christ, the son of God. He is not dead, but he's alive and lives forevermore. That's the same yesterday, today, and forever. How many believe that? God bless you. How many of you believe that he can appear, right? We ain't got no prayer cards to give out, have we? How many sick out there and want healing? Raise your hand. Say, God, I'm sick. I need healing. Just raise up your hands. Anybody that's sick and wants healing, just raise up your hands and say, I pray that God will make me well. You've got a loved one you're praying for. Raise up your hand. Say, I'm praying. God be merciful. There isn't a person in this building that I know outside of, I believe, if I'm not sure, this is Pat sitting right here. Pat Tyler, um, I don't know whether you all know him or not. And Brother Jane God setting here taking a message, men on the platform. I met them last night, finest bunch of men I ever met in my life. But the only ones that I really know personally is Brother Wright there. He sponsored me the first time I was here, Brother Williams and his son, Brother Borders, Brother David and Brother Harvey is the only ones that I really know here. But Jesus Christ knows every one of you is he is the same yesterday today and forever. Put into a showdown is he God, is it right? He knows every one of you. If he'll be approaching the coming of the Son of God, how did he, he prove himself to be God and to be the Son of God to the Jews? When he told Peter who he was, he said, told Nathaniel where he'd been when he was under the fig tree, when he saw him under the tree praying. He said, Thou art the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. That was the sign of their Messiah to the Jewish nations. The priest walked back and said, You are a fortune teller. And he said, You say that about me, I'll forgive you. But when the Holy Ghost is come, but not speak against it then, because it will never be forgiven in this world or the world to come. Watch that. Well, there's only three classes of people, that's Ham, Shem, and Jephthah's people. That's right. Uh, that's Jews, Gentiles, Samaritans. Remember, Peter at Pentecost preached to the Jews, opened the kingdom to the Samaritans. When Philip had went down and baptized them, yet they did not receive the Holy Ghost. Down at the house of Cornelius, and all of them had had it, Ham, Shem, and Jephthah's people, the Holy Ghost was then. They didn't need him anymore for that purpose because the Holy Spirit had went to the people. When Jesus came, we Gentiles were Anglo-Saxons, which did not look for no coming Messiah. We were heathens with clubs on our back, but they that were looking for Messiah, there was the Jews and the Samaritans looking for the Messiah. When he appeared, how? What kind of a sign did he do? He done the sign of the prophet that Moses spoke of it. It would be a God prophet. They looked at it. Those who are really spiritual led, they seen him do that sign. And they said, that's him. But the others that had all their intellectual trainings, they said, this guy is Belzebub. He went over to Samaria. He had need. A woman come out at the well and he said, bring me a drink of water. And he says, not customary. We've got segregation here. Jews and Samaritans have no dealing. He said, woman, if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. She said, well, the well's deep and you have. What was he doing? He was contacting her spirit. And when he found where her trouble was, we all know what it was, where her trouble lay. He said, go get your husband and come here. He said, I don't have any husband. Said, you said right. You got five, and the one you're living with now is not your husband. She said, sir, I perceive your bezel, but no, sir. Said, 
we said that perceive you are a prophet. I perceive you are a prophet. Now we know, we know, we Samaritan, we are taught. We know when Messiah comes, he will tell us these things. That was the sign of the Messiah. But who are you? He said, I am he that speaks to you, oh my. Remember, not to Gentiles. Did he ever do it? He did not do that to Gentiles. Then if he is an infinite God and let them with an intellectual teaching as much as we have today, if we go into the, out of this our dispensation without the manifestation, then he done something for them that he did not do for us. But he was same yesterday, today and forever. He promised he would do it. What did he do? Uh, do it? Many scriptures, but the one I just quoted, as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. So shall it be. The same thing will take place just before the fire. There he is, the infinite God. He's come tonight. That's a big thing to say, but it's a something that the Bible said so. And the Holy Spirit is here to back it up and say it's the truth. That's right. Let us pray. Oh Lord, there's somebody there suffering, no doubt. Some people in need, I pray the Father to be merciful. And just let it be known that thou art God. Just speak to the word, Lord. And I pray that some poor soul in here that's seeking you, that they'll be able to touch the high priest that can be touched by the feeling of infirmity. Just grant it, Lord, at least one or two, that the people might know in a month of one or two witnesses, or two or three witnesses, may every word be established. Grant it, Father, I ask it for God's glory and for the sake of the message tonight, Lord, and your word that declares it to be so, that the people might know that the time of unfolding and unveiling is at hand, that you are here the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Now, I want you to pray. I want you to believe with all your heart and all that is within you to believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is here. How many strangers to me out there that I don't, do not, I don't know you. Raise up your hand all out to the building, no matter where you are. Now, perhaps you have never known this. Now, if I'll have to follow the Holy Spirit, if he asks, speaks, you answer. I don't see that it will. I'm just saying I pray that it will see, that it will. I have no right to say that only by his word. He said that he will grant it, and we believe that it will ha be granted. Now you pray. Now it's your faith. You can do nothing till you touch him. Then he speaks to me. If you believe, if you can believe, if thou canst believe, yes. Here it is, just a moment, right over here to my left. There sits a woman sitting there, kind of heavyset. She is real seriously sick. She had a heart trouble. Shadowed by cancer, spiritual demon depression, oppression rather. The lady sits right here with her head bowed, looking right this way at me. Do you believe, Lady, that Jesus Christ will make you well? Do you believe it? Do you? You accept it? Lost it? Now you have to beat that. Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, let it be known that the people might understand, Lord. Her faith in God is a man standing right back here praying for his wife. He's got his wife on his mind. He's praying for her. She's had operations and so forth. And it doesn't seem to help her any. That's exactly right. Now, that man's a minister, Reverend Nathan. Jacob Nathan, your wife sitting next to you. You believe that Jesus Christ will make her well? You accept it, sir? Raise up your hand if you accept it. God bless you. Go on. I never seen the man in my life have faith in God. Let that pass you. He is God forevermore. Here sits a woman. She bowed her head right there. She is sitting there looking to me now. The woman's limb somehow has got beneath her a crutch that she walks on. Do you believe, lady, that Jesus Christ will let you walk out of here without them crutches tonight? You believe it? Sitting right there looking at me. Will you accept it? Your healing. Raise up your hand. I've never seen in my life. But if you believe it, you leave it to them lay there and walk out and be whole. I challenge your faith to believe it. If thou canst believe, 
What about back here now? What about you ministers, you brothers, believing with all your heart? Now you are everyone, strangers to me, besides Brother Williams. God loves you, you are his servant. I'm here to be your brother, the Spirit of God is here. I boldly say it in Jesus Christ's name. You just have faith and believe. If there's something wrong, ask him. This man sitting right here looking at me, it's not exactly you, it's your dad sitting out there. That's right. Do you believe God can tell me what's wrong with him? Would you believe it? In his feet. That's right. Stand on your feet. He just said his dad is sitting right there, an old man, kind of bald-headed, sitting there looking right at me now. Here, look here. Don't you see that light? Look at that light over this little woman here. He's praying also. He knows that woman sitting right there, that little woman. Do you believe God? And tell me what's wrong with her. Will you believe it? It's in her legs. That's right. You believe God? Do you believe that the angel of the Lord, the same Jesus yesterday, today, and forever, he remains God, and there's nothing that can harm, nothing can hinder Jesus Christ, God's Son, lives forevermore, ever alive to make intercessions. If we will only believe, have faith, God will perform the rest. Do you believe that with all your heart? Now, do you believe that the coming Messiah is at hand? What is those people? I have never seen one of them in my life, and God knows that to be true. Now, you got it started. Now, it's just going around all over the building. Right now is the time. Now is the time to receive your healing. Lay your hands on one another. Put your hands over on one another and believe now. Now, you got it. Now, you are coming into faith. O oh Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, let it be known tonight that thou art the Son of God. You have made it known you are God. And let your Holy Spirit fall in this among these people and prove to them that thou art the great Jehovah God, that you remain the same yesterday. Satan, you are defeated. Come out of these people. I adjure thee by the power of the living God that you come out of these people. In Jesus' name, all right.